Hello student, in today's lesson, we are going to discuss the comparison between open and closed circulatory system, or basically transport in animals, since we are done discussing transport in plants. Large and complex animals have a circulatory system that consists of tubes, a transport fluid, and a means of pumping the transport fluid. A circulatory system transports substances within the body and also maintains a steep concentration gradient at the surfaces where diffusion takes place. So some of the surfaces where dif uh, diffusion takes place include alveoli in the lungs and gill filaments for those organisms having gills, for example, fish, and even in the digestive system, where my digested food substances must diffuse to the tissues. There are two types of circulatory system in animals, open and closed. Open circulatory system. The transport fluid is not confined or contained to the blood vessel, but found in general, general body cavity called the psyllium. The heart pumps blood or the transport fluid into the vessels, uh, which open into the body spaces known as the hemocyl. The transport fluid is called hemolymph and is contained in hemocyl within a dorsal tubular heart. The transport fluid comes into contact with tissues always. This type of circulation is found in invertebrates, especially arthropods. And arthropods include the insects and uh, crustaceans, uh, the ar arachnids like the ticks and spider. We also have the millipede and centipede among other organisms. Those are arthropods, organisms with jointed appendages. The hemolymph contains suspended white blood cells and pigments, but is not largely involved in transport of oxygen and carbon-4 oxide. The transport system of gases is in insect is by diffusion and in tubes called tracheals. The main functions of the transport fluid in an insect are to transport nutrients, excretory products and even hormones. In a typical insect such as the cockroach, there is a tubular heart just above the alimentary canal. The heart has chambers, 13 of them, 3 in the thorax and 10 in the abdominal uh, segments. So these are the chambers of the heart and they contain openings called ostia. These openings called ostia are controlled by valves. The anterior segment is joined to the aorta. You can see that empties the hem hemolymph into sinuses in the head. So this is the hemolymph being emptied to the sinuses of the head. And this is the gen the general body cavity called the uh, hymocele. The, the transport fluid is here, is in direct contact with the tissues and it is just, uh, the hemolymph is being, uh, is just passing. Each chamber has a pair of lateral openings called ostia, controlled or closed by valves. 
and the valves allow transport fluid to flow into the heart through the as ostia but not out of it. The anterior part of it has a pair of valves that prevent backflow of the hemolymph. We move to the closed circulatory system. This is found in vertebrates or those animals with the backbone and also in annelids where the blood is confined within blood vessels such as the uh, arteries and veins and even capillaries and does not come in direct contact with tissues. In this system, a powerful muscular heart pumps blood into specialized blood tubes, that is the blood vessels as I had mentioned. These blood vessels carry blood to the body tissues and even back to the heart. Veins take the blood back to the heart from the body, all body tissues, as the arteries uh, pump blood away from the blood. But there are a few exceptions we are going also to discuss um, in the next lesson. The circulation in where the oxygenated blood from the body tissues is pumped from the heart to the lungs through the pulmonary artery and then the oxygenated blood from the lungs uh, is pumped back to the heart through the pulmonary vein is called pulmonary circulation. So you can see this distance from the heart to the lungs and then to the, from the lungs to the heart. That is pulmonary circulation. Oxygenated blood, this, uh, blood leaves the heart through the aorta and goes to all the tissues of the body. From the tissues, uh, this oxygen is lacking blood and is called deoxygenated and flows back to the heart through the vena cava. This circulation is called systemic because this blood from the uh, lungs has been brought back to the heart through the pulmonary circulation and the blood in the heart is now rich in oxygen. So it has to leave the heart through the outer to all parts of the tissues such as uh, part, uh, to all the tissues of the body like the head, arms, legs, all those. Then that, uh, that blood which is deoxygenated from the tissues is being taken back to the heart through the vena cava. That is what we call systemic circulation. You can see it is a longer distance. In each complete circulation, the blood flows into the heart twice, and that is what we call dibo circulation. And for example, mammals and birds, whose heart is divided into four chambers, two auricles and two ventricles. The oxygenated blood from the body tissues enters the right auricle of the heart through the vena cava and flows into the right ventricle from where it is pumped into the pulmonary artery to the lungs for oxygenation. From the lungs, oxygen-rich blood flows back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. That is what we call um, uh, double circulation. Blood is, form, uh, is flowing to the heart twice in every complete circulation. Some other animals like the fish have simple circulation and blood flows only once through the heart for every complete circuit. And in this case, the heart contains two chambers one auricle and one ventricle. In fish, blood from the body tissues flows into the auricle, then into the ventricle. The ventricle then pumps blood to the capillaries of the gills and into the blood, into the body tissue and back to the heart. As we had, we had discussed, uh, discussed earlier, we said the systemic path 
is much longer than the pulmonary path as it transports blood to every part of the body. So the systemic path supplies blood to all parts uh, to, of the body as pulmonary path is only involving circulation from the heart to the lungs and then from the lungs back to the heart. So this table compares or gives the differences between open and closed circulatory system. In open circulatory system, blood or the transport fluid, which is the hemocyl, is pumped into the general body cavity. So that hemolymph uh, is pumped to the hemocyl. But for closed, blood is pumped into blood vessels. In the case of open circulatory system, hemolymph is in direct contact with the body tissues, hence exchange of materials uh, is directly with the uh, fluid. But for the case of closed circulatory system, there is no direct contact between blood and the tissues. That means the exchange of materials is indirect through tissue fluid. In open, hemolymph loses pressure as it flows into the hemocyl, hence uh, flows slowly. As material supply to the tissues is slow, hence animal becomes less active. But for the case of closed circulatory system, there is high blood pressure maintained in the blood vessels which are closed, hence supply of materials to the tissues is faster and therefore animals are more active. The disadvantage of a closed of, or the advantage of a double circulation over a single circulation is that the blood flows at a higher pressure because it is pumped twice. Also, oxygenated blood do not mix with deoxygenated blood. Therefore, birds, birds and mammals are more physically active compared to animals uh, with single circulation. That marks the end of the lesson. Be a smart student. Just find the answers to these questions from the notes and always strive to achieve the best you can. Nice time.